Around two years ago, I made a What Happened to Onision video which garnered a decent amount of views. At the time, I described him as a fading YouTube star with a dysfunctional personal and professional life that he felt the need to make a public spectacle. He may have not been as popular as in his heyday in part due to YouTube specifically deranking his channel, but he still had enough of an audience to run a normal YouTube business with a smaller but dedicated fan base. Boy, have things changed. I was pretty sure Greg was just going to fade into obscurity over the next few years, becoming a side note of internet history. But in 2019, there was a revived interest in this man's long list of shenanigans. This information wasn't new to somebody like me who had watched his live over the past decade, but to millions they were in awe over the story surrounding a man with an attraction to barely legal girls. Currently there are channels dedicated to covering only the life and times of Onision and the people surrounding him. Many are pulling in crazy numbers which has truly disrupted Greg's way of life. While most are interested in seeing what will happen next, I'm particularly curious in what is currently going on, because it seems like Onision has invented a brand new business model for how to make a living as a YouTuber in 2020. And I don't think anyone else has been able to do it like he has before. Let me explain. As 2019 went on, Greg realized that there were a lot more people watching videos hating on him than actually watching his original work. And this is where things changed. Gone are the days of the banana song, skits, opinion videos, and meme reviews. Instead he makes what people are looking for. Him going crazy and taking off his shirt, pouring drinks on himself, yelling and crying. Other times he's a bit more collected and makes counter arguments to the claims made against him, which allows the drama to grow. Instead of keeping a low profile, these videos continuously made more and more YouTubers give updates on the situation. But why on earth would Greg do this to himself? This was exclusive exclusively negative attention? Well, the answer to that question lies in the good old content ID system. You see, as a way to appease content right holders, YouTube designed a system that would allow a bot to scan videos to find if their footage was being used, so it would be claimed and they could collect the AdSense revenue from the said upload. And guess who has access to this feature? Onision. Since his channels have very few legitimate fans anymore, he makes videos feeding into the haters. Then tons of other YouTubers cover the situation, and all he has to do is sit back and let the bot claim thousands of videos using his footage so he can redirect all the ad revenue back to himself. Even with ad rates being low for content covering him, I would imagine that these claims he's made over 100 channels adds up to possibly tens of millions of views every single month. And since fighting it requires a creator to get the video deleted for over a week and have a strike on their account, most don't bother and let Greg get away with it. So he keeps all of that ad revenue to himself. Some say this is an abuse of the YouTube system, but I'd argue Onision is using it exactly as intended, just like other big corporations. The content ID system was designed to discourage creators from fighting back, so claimants could make out like bandits. Maybe Onision will make Google reconsider how the system currently operates, but honestly I think the more likely scenario is they ban him from using the service to subdue the outrage so things go back to business as usual. In the meantime, he's making some good money with this revenue stream. On top of all that content ID cash, he also has a small but loyal group that pays him money to be allowed on his private Discord server, along with the ability to play video games with him. Since his Patreon was removed, it's hard to say exactly how much he's making through this revenue stream, but I'd imagine it's in the low thousands. A lot of people seem so sure that all this negative attention is going to get him put in jail for all his interactions with underage fans, as if this is a Harvey Weinstein or Bill Cosby scenario, but I can't say that I'm so sure of this. Onision lives in Washington state where the age of consent is 16 years of age. So while you can argue the ethics of that portion of it, that on its own wasn't technically illegal. And many of the other serious allegations of illegal wrongdoing seem to rely on hearsay, with Greg outright denying the claims made against him. I'm not saying it's impossible for Greg to be arrested for something, but I think people acting like the cops will be busting down his door any day now are being a bit too zealous. Greg has been getting reported to law enforcement for years now, and the only thing they have ever gotten him on is not paying his taxes. I'm sure the district attorney and FBI have looked into the case, but we haven't heard a word from them yet. Can that change? 
of course, or they might decide there's not enough there to pursue. I think this new push to get Greg thrown in jail is in large part due to Chris Hansen, known for To Catch a Predator, as well as YouTuber Repsion, whose real name is Daniel. The two men are on the forefront of Onision coverage to the point that Chris actually showed up to his house for an interview, leading to a pretty humorous 911 call from Greg. I didn't see any weapons. I just saw like okay. six guys in my driveway oh. and one of them is knocking on my door. And the one that's knocking on your door, is he the main one that you said has been stalking you? Yes, he's a stalker. Oh. He's, he's, yelling, he's yelling things at me through the door right now. Okay, and what, do we know his name at all? It's Chris Hansen. While Chris has had some experience dealing with the legal side of journalism, Repsion, on the other hand, has had a bit more trouble with the grief Greg has brought his way. He has faced the looming threat of Onision taking legal action against him, along with trying to deal with the aforementioned content ID claims. This has forced him to spend thousands of dollars on lawyers just to protect himself and his channel. Within the last two hours, I received two emails from Onision himself. Some time ago, I asked you to stop making videos about me that were based on misinformation and were slanderous. This email is to formally request you to remove all videos about me on your channel, especially the most slanderous ones. Having requested the removal of said videos formally, and now me asking you to stop harassing myself and my family, your actions beyond that last request and this point make legal matters more simplistic. You have made countless videos harassing myself and my family over the last seven or more years. You've made videos about my Patreon, which is a huge source of my income, and as a result, I can prove financial damages. There's no denying that Onision is in the wrong for blanket claiming many of Daniel's videos or bringing him to court to just to drop the suits. But while people are rightfully sympathetic to Repsion's legal troubles, at the same time, this is actually the best thing to happen in his career. You see, Repsion is a YouTuber who has been making content for quite some time. If you've been around for a while, you might remember his first big break on the site a half a decade ago, with him going after religious fundamentalists and social justice warriors. But after the 2016 election, his numbers started to tank drastically. In the course of only two years, he went from consistently pulling in 2 million views a month to often not even getting 200,000 while also losing thousands of subscribers. As I would put it, he had a dead channel. But then, at the very end of 2018, he made a video on Onision that gained a massive amount of views, then another, then another, until a majority of the content on his account was covering every single little facet of one man's dysfunctional life and as a result, his channel was back in business. The downside to this newfound popularity was it made Repsion the main target of Greg. He was claiming every single one of the videos talking about him, which made Daniel need to hire a lawyer to try to make him stop. And more recently, we had this current drama where Greg dragged him to court to fight a frivolous accusation. If there's one piece of advice I'd give Repsion, which for all I know he could already be doing, is to work all these legal fees right into your video making budget. Whatever revenue you pull in, squirrel some of it away into a retainer. Daniel may not appreciate it now, but all this drama is actually a positive for his channel in a weird way. He's gaining a ton of extra views for his videos, and on top of that, the legal drama is brand new attention-grabbing content for the account. When a GoFundMe was made to help subsidize his $2,500 legal cost, it made almost 10 times that amount before the donations were disabled. On top of this, Onision represents himself in these lawsuits, so there's not much of a possibility of Daniel losing. That being said, I am not envious of the position he is in, and the stress of getting sued is probably not worth the extra subscribers. Just as for Repsion, the same thing can be said for Chris Hansen. His coverage of Onision is the most significant thing he has done in his career since To Catch a Predator. It's almost acted as a redemption arc for himself. People are infatuated by this one man's life and Daniel and Chris have capitalized off of that. Even if they don't want to admit it, the truth is this drama surrounding Greg and the people reporting on it are all part of one big symbiotic relationship. Onision does something crazy. All these big YouTubers give him attention, which gives Onision more money and the cycle continues on to the point that even though Greg has been an online celebrity for well over a decade, he's bigger now than ever before. People tend to think that the heyday of Onision was years ago when he was pulling in tons of views on his channels, collabing with other creators, and making his money like a normal YouTuber. 
However, if we look at Google Trends, we can see that even though people think this is the end of Onision, he's actually more famous than ever before. I'm not usually one to agree with the notion that there's no such thing as bad publicity, but in Greg's case, that actually may be the truth. As long as he doesn't go to jail, he can coast off of this insanity for years to come because as long as YouTubers keep on making videos on him and their subscribers keep on watching those videos, Onision has a viable business model. Greg is at a point where he has nothing to lose in terms of public opinion. There is not a single thing he can say or do that would get people to forgive him or leave him alone, and he's well aware of that fact. People are constantly telling him all across social media to stop with the antics. But what would be his motivation for doing so when there's no path to redemption? He can't just go back to making the old type of content, there's no money in that. And with his reputation online, he can't just go out and get a regular job either to move past this drama. With a family to support, he has few other options than to keep up his current song and dance. New bizarre storylines and a constant stream of crazed videos. Also, he can keep people paying for a behind the scenes look through his private discord and content ID claiming videos talking about him. I know it sounds really bad to say I could empathize with Onision, but in a weird way, I understand what he's currently doing. Where Greg is at currently reflects 15 years of poor choices. So when you look at everything he's done, leading up to where he's at now, his current strange behavior in a very twisted, backwards way makes sense. Now to be clear, just because something makes sense doesn't mean it's right. But if there's one positive thing that could come from this recent attention to Onision and the backlog of accusations, is that I don't think he'll be able to get any more teenage girls. Unless, of course, the teenage girls find this attractive. <laughs> On top of this, he now has thousands more people scrutinizing every single little thing he does, including government officials. While I may be skeptical of him going to jail over the alleged crimes from his past, if he does get caught doing something moving forward, I would put money on the book being thrown at him. Je peux vous le 